you all have joined us today. And uh, again, this is our Bible study here at the Walk of Faith Church here in Mount Bay, Walk of Covenant, Walk of Faith Covenant Church here in Mount Bay, Mississippi. I'm glad again that you all have joined us. Uh, so I'm, go- I'm 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 laying out some 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 biblical uh, principles or some things for us to grow by. And today I want to do a, more of a study on uh, operating in faith. And uh, uh, so, therefore, if any of you all are on that would like to maybe, um, uh, if, you, if you want to, um, uh, if you, even if you want to just um, send in a question, you can do that. And uh, we'll try to, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm here, if, if I'm able to see it, and I think I will be, uh, I will also be able to address your question uh, while you are on. So, uh, again, thank all of you all for coming on. Uh, I see uh, some of my cousins are coming on right now. And uh, blessings up on you all. And uh, may God made it in the house on time. May you made it. Look, you if you weren't here the last time, you you were here this time on time. So, so God bless you for coming in, and we're glad you, you're here with us as well, and all of you all that's joined us. I'm starting in a scripture in, um, in, I'm starting today in a scripture in Hebrews. And that scripture in Hebrews is a very familiar scripture, and I want to share that a little bit before I go into some of the other scriptures. But I want to share the scripture that, that uh, we have in Hebrews that, that many of you all have uh, have read, have heard, have quoted, and it's, it's in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, 11th chapter of Hebrews, uh, beginning at the first verse. That's the 11th chapter of Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. And for those of you that, uh, you, some of you all probably can, uh, can, say this by memory. It says, faith, now faith. Now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, uh, the men of old obtained a good report. Now, I, I wanted to share that scripture because after being born again, our operation, our motor of operation is by faith. And we need to understand this is how we operate in the kingdom of God. You're going to find out that the Bible says uh, in verse 6, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. So what pleases God is that we move around and operate by faith. And he was telling those disciples in Mark 11 chapter, and you might want to look at that your own self, around the 22nd verse, he was telling those disciples who he was teaching he was telling those disciples, this is how you operate in faith. And uh, they were, had just gotten excited because Jesus had spoken to a tree. And the tree, uh, it, 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 it withered up. And they got excited because the tree withered up. He said, well, you'll be able to speak. You'll be able to speak uh, to a mountain and tell the mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast in, into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, see what, here's the thing, we have to learn how to let God speak through us and not feel like it is us speaking and we have to stand behind what we said. God's word has already been put out there for us. And all we have to do is declare it and believe it. That's the force that we have. We have the force of faith that we have. And so it is the faith in the word that we speak. Now, why do you have faith in the word of speak that, that you speak? Why do you have faith in that word? The Bible says, listen to this now. The Bible says, faith is the assurance. That's what faith is. You are, number one, assured. That's what faith is. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, it's the title deed of the things, first of all, that we hope for. See, before you get to faith, you got to have some hope. 
That's why we took some time to talk about hope, because it is the it is it, faith is it's the it's the assurance, and so it breaks it down. It says the confirmation is the title deed of the things that we hope for. Now, faith actually then gives substance to what we hope. Faith actually gives substance to what we hope, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, then I'm going to go back and talk about, uh, I'm going to go back and talk about what, how do we, how we direct our hope. Why do we have hope? A lot of people live and a lot of people die because they lose hope. It's hard for them to have hope when they don't have anything to hope for. They don't have no hope. You hear people talk about, I lost hope. That's because they don't have, they don't have this this actual understanding of the blueprint that has been made out. And, and, and sadly enough, Christians lose, listen to this, hope. That, and it's, it's in, this, in the Christian realm. And wouldn't it give the devil all the pleasure in the world to just start playing and talking? Oh, it ain't going to happen. Really, you, you see, that? You, you're not going to do this, and this is not going to be good for you, and that ain't going to happen, and that, that's why you, you think Jesus died for you. He really didn't die for you. Just all types of things, and people lose hope. What we have to do is realize that there is a real blueprint. And I'm using the word blueprint because a blueprint, actually, when we see it, It'll give us hope. So, so, so hope, listen to what hope is. You might want to write this down. Hope is a earnest, it's an earnest expectation. And again, it's like building a house by the blueprints. Now, nobody's going to go get somebody and say it. I just want you to build a house. And then uh, John, John and Lee say, well, what, what type of house you want me to build? You, let me see your blueprint. Well, I ain't got no blueprints. I just want you to just start building something. Well, if John and Lee is going to build a house and you tell them you don't have, you, you don't, it, it can be anything. And it can be wop-sided. It can have, have half of this and half of that. But, but a blueprint will give you specific instructions as to how that house is to be built. So how do you know you're going to get this out? I got some hope now because I got some blueprints here that has this house on it that says I can get a house if you do it like this. And the blueprint, I know on the blueprint, it has a drawing on that blueprint that shows me, if you do it like the blueprint, that house is going to look like this right here. And so hope is like that blueprint. Are, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? And so, so hope, hope is like the blueprint set up. It's the foundation because now faith builds the house. Now you got faith to build a house that hope gave the blueprint for. Uh, are y'all understanding that? So hope gave the blueprint. Now faith builds the house based on the blueprint that hope gave. So, 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 so listen, listen. If you don't have no blueprint, you can't, how are you going to get a house? So if you don't have no hope, how are you going to get faith? Faith hooks up to your hope. And say, yeah, let's get her done. Y'all, y'all, y'all got that? Faith says, let's get her done. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Why? Because you already looking at your hope. I got hope based on this right here. It says it's some hope there. And so that gets us back because hope actually is a mental, listen to this, a mental picture. Hope is. It is a mental picture of what we earnestly expect. Hope is a mental picture 
It's a mental picture of what we earnestly expect. I, I, I'm, I'm building this mental, listen to this. I'm building this mental image. I'm reading in the word of God where Jesus died so that I can be healed. I'm building this mental image. You see, your faith is based on your hope where your hope says that where you are is something in hope that says you can get a whole lot better than where you are right now. You, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. It's, 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 you, hope gives you a mental image of where you should be in Christ. Even if you're not there in Christ, you can read the blueprint and say, well, I'm supposed to be right here. Faith then is added to the hope and it'll get you right there. If it has something to do with, with, with finances, it'll tell you how and what you need to be doing. But, but, but based on that, you see yourself in that, in that Jesus died so that, that you don't be uh, impoverished. And if your condition says that you are in poverty, then there's a word in that blueprint that's going to tell you how to get out of poverty. If then there is sickness and disease that have racked and your body and your body is racked with pain, and that is not the condition that God agrees with, but based on the blueprint, you read the blueprint and give me some hope. Let me add my faith to what's in the blueprint. Y'all got that? I'm going to add my faith to the blueprint. So the, 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 the uh, faith builds the house that hope provides the blueprint for. Faith builds the house. Listen, faith changes hope to reality. That's what faith does. Faith changes hope to reality. Actually, faith is created by and from hope. You can get faith from hope. See, so, so on that building that we're talking about building, at the very foundation of that building is hope. And when you got hope, faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. And faith is evidence, because evidence coming next. Of the things you can't see, but evidence now is coming because you build on the blueprint of hope that God put there for you. And God has given us a blueprint of hope through the word of God. The word is powerful. It is mighty. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is a lamp unto our feet. Psalms 119, a light unto our pathway. It is the word of God that created this world. It is the word of God that created man. And it is the word of God that heals man. It is the word of God that blesses man. It is the word of of God that gives remedy to any situation, and we just have to believe it through faith. Hope through the word of God gives the blueprint so that we can utilize faith. Your hope and your expectations, listen to this, are anchored in only one thing. Now listen to this. Listen to this, because after all of the Babylon and all of, all of the things that happened in the Babylon, all, all of the Old Testament, you remember we talked about the Old Testament, everything that was going on in the Old Testament, it was pointing toward what was going to happen at the cross, uh, uh, everything that went on in the Bible and, and, and all of the, even Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it, 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 Jesus was getting everything ready because he was, he was pointing toward one thing. It was the cross of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus went to the cross, 
When Jesus said, it is finished, he finished up everything from Genesis to all the way up to the point right there. At, actually, from Genesis to Revelation, Jesus finishes up. He said, it is finished. Now, everybody that came after that, that lived upon the earth after that, I qualify, don't you? Everybody that came have access to the blood of Jesus, then which puts us in the family of Jesus. Now when you get baptized, he was saying, that's why you're saying in Acts, baptize them in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because now you have access to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Evidence of the Holy Spirit, when, when, when after the church got started, in Acts, the second chapter, the church gets started. Here's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. That, that There was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the place where all of them were. And the Bible says, and they began to speak. Listen to them. They doing what God did in Genesis. And God said, and it was. And God said, and it was. And God said, and it was. And God said, God made people, man, and guess what man doing? He's speaking just like God. Those folks on the outside say, we hear people in there, they speaking languages that they don't even know. I see them talking, I hear them praising God in my language. And I know they don't speak my language. So you had tongues being activated, and a man is able to speak the word of God without even thinking, oh my God, did I, did I just say that? It surpassed and bypassed man's mind so that man can be hooked up to the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost now is manifesting in man the Holy Spirit and here's the administration of the Holy Spirit coming through man. Why? Because Jesus washed us in his blood by way of washing us in the blood, he gave us access to the Holy Spirit on the inside. No wonder Jesus said you can speak to a mountain because it ain't you. You got something on the inside of you, and if you open your mouth, the Bible said Christ in you is the hope of glory. Y'all got that? It's, it's the hope of glory. It's in Christ. Christ is coming out of you. It's the hope of glory. And what did what Romans 10, 9 and 10 say? But what, what the word is just as close to you as in your mouth. You mean to tell me that you walking around talking your own stuff when God says that I just want to use your mouth and you just get out the way. Quit thinking of all that. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was what? Also in Christ. I got to change my mind. So if I'm going to have faith in God's word, if I'm going to have faith in God's word, i got to see the blueprint that says that all of these things can happen to me. Because guess what's going to stop everything that I just said if I don't believe? And if I don't have no hope, that pulls the very foundation of any faith that I'm going to have. You can holler, oh, i got faith. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Some people have faith that God didn't do nothing for them. But they still got faith. The Bible says that the devil believes and he trembles. But what do you direct your faith in? You direct your faith into now what's on that blueprint. It is called the finished work of Christ. Did y'all hear me? It's the finished work of Christ. You might want to write that down. It's the finished work of Christ. It is the finished work of Christ. You have your hope anchored in one thing. It is the finished work of Christ. Where did you find his hope? It's in the word of God. And it's going to tell you about the finished work of Christ. And everything from Acts on is always going to point not forward, no more. 
Anything from X forward is not going to have you directing your faith to God going to do something. Did you hear what I'm saying? When your faith is directed to God has already done it, then you're referring and, and connecting your faith to the finished work of Christ. When you direct your faith that God's going to do something, then you're declaring that God ain't got it through yet. Finish it. So you're actually saying, and there's no anointing on that, because you're actually saying, God, don't do it. Jesus said it's already done. It is finished. Isn't that wonderful? Now our faith then have to be directed. It has to be directed. Amen? Y'all got that? Y'all understanding that? All right. And uh, I, I see we got some people that, that's joined us. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I just want to recognize all of y'all that joined. God bless y'all for coming in. Uh, and some more uh, that, that's come, come on as well. Uh, I am teaching out of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making reference to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first verse. And I'm talking about faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I'm telling you what you had, you had to have your faith in. Because people, if you don't direct your faith the right way, you're going to still be expecting God to do something tomorrow. And people live and they die and they miss God because they're waiting on God to do something. You're waiting on God and God waiting on you. We, we, we waiting on God. We waiting on God to do something for us. And God, and guess what God's saying? I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to declare. I'm waiting on you to speak. I'm waiting on you to have faith. I'm waiting on you to look at the blueprint and see what I've done for you. Direct your faith back to the finished work of Christ. It's the finished work of Christ. Jesus gets ready. Jesus gets ready uh, to, to go to the cross. And we see Jesus getting ready to go to the cross. And so as we see that, uh, let's, let's look over in. I said I was going to jump over here and uh, look at John, the uh, 16th chapter. And I just want to look at that right quick. John 16. And we're going to look at that real quick. John 16th chapter. And Jesus in John the 15th chapter, John the 16th chapter, actually, if you read those and study those, you'll find out how much that Christ has, uh, that actually, God has, has uh, fixed it so that, that we could, uh, he actually fixed it so that we can enjoy the triune God. And, 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 and you'll understand more of this when I said when I, what, I, what I'm saying when you would uh, actually read what I'm talking about and it's John the uh, the uh, uh, 16th but in John the 15th chapter I'm, now let me just give you a little bit of this so you so you can see it John the 15th chapter let me give you a little bit of what it says if you look at John the 15th chapter you see John and, and, and chapter 1 it says I am the true vine and my Father, so this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the true vine. And then he makes reference, Jesus is the son. And he's making reference then to, uh, he's making reference to his father. He said, my father is the vine dresser. Then he goes on, and every branch in me uh, that uh, bears fruit, he prunes it. And, and so he's, actually, if you read this, you're going to find uh, you're going to find that, 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 that actually it is showing you the correlation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you read that in John, the 15th chapter, and you'll go on, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to then start telling you uh, more about how you grow in this as well. And so look at, if you look down at verse number 9, it says, that the Father loved me. I also love you. So remain in my love. Then he goes on, if you keep my commandments, 
you will remain in my love because he's going to tell you how to stay in his love. If you keep my commandments, you remain in my love. And even as I've kept my father's commandments and remain in his love, I've spoken these things to you that my joy can remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is the commandment that you love one another. So you're going to go on and you're going to see this as he talks about he and the father uh, and, and the relationship between God uh, Jesus the Son and God the Father, and then he's going. He's telling. He's telling the disciples how you're going to have to unpeace yourself from the world. And then over in verse 18, he said, "If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And if you were in the world of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, the world therefore hates you too." Isn't that right? You know that the world's going to hate you as well. <laughs> and so then he goes on, because I, I was telling you in John 15, he goes on here. If you go down to verse number, uh, uh, verse number 26, it says, but when the counselor, all right, comes, whom I shall send, uh, who I'm, I'm going to send from the Father, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he's going to bear witness. So, so what did I tell you? You're looking at the triune God getting ready to make the triune God's abode in man. Y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell you because we have to realize who we are. When we accept Christ in our life, we don't just accept a, a, a word, but we accept God himself as the triune God. We accept the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Jesus, who shed his blood for us, the Holy Ghost who's coming out of my mouth, and the Father who loves me, and I'm in the midst of all of this, and Jesus saying, I'm preparing them so that he can understand this. So, so study the 15th chapter of John. Study. Then he goes on in the 16th uh, chapter, uh, and, and he goes on uh, because he's letting them know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let y'all know these things. He continues this conversation. So in the 16th chapter, John, Jesus continues the conversation, and he says, I've spoken these things to you that you would not fall away. They're going to put out, they're going put to you, put you out of the synagogue, yeah, the time is coming. Whoever kills, uh, you will think that, that he is offering a service to God. All right? And, and they're going to do things to you and so forth and so on. And then going on to verse number um, uh, 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 five, but now I'm going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Rather sorrow has filled your heart. Because I told you these things, because they're still thinking, they're still thinking earthly. All right? Then he goes on in verse number 12. Go down to verse number 12. I, I have yet many things to tell you, but you, you can't handle them. He said, you can't bear these. But when the spirit, listen again, look at what he said. The spirit of truth is coming. But when the spirit of truth comes, what is he going to do? And we skip across a lot of this when we read it. Here's, here's, here's Jesus telling us that the spirit of truth is going to come. And what does he do? He's going to guide us. Now, we got to take this as instructions of, from, from the spirit of God that he's instructing us. For when, you get, when you give yourself to the Lord, these are the things that happen. That's what he's saying. So he's saying to you, he's saying to you, when the spirit of truth, who is that? The Holy Spirit. When he comes, look at it. For he's not going to speak on his own authority, but he's going to speak. Listen to this. Whatever he hears, and he will tell you things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he's going to receive from me and will declare to you all that the Father has is mine. Now, 
I want y'all to see this. If you notice what you just read, Jesus, as the son says to his disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the father because I speak his words. He said, the words that I speak are not my words. We just read that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, and this is God as well, as far as the Holy Spirit, he's going to speak what he's told to speak. Who is the administrator then of everything? Who did Jesus say he's listening to? Who did Jesus say that the Holy Spirit is listening to? And so guess what? Everything that you say is going to be things that the Father says. You have ultimate authority and ultimate power waiting for you to open your mouth and speak what God says. Let me just tell you something, because it's time for me to close. Well, I, I, I need to go here. I need to go here before I, before, I, before I do some talking. Look at verse at, ver, at chapter number 17, John 17. Jesus goes into this prayer, and you can tell he's getting ready to close the book. He is, he is around 33-ish. He's getting ready to close the book. He knows that things are about to happen, and look at what he starts off and says. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. So you see the relationship. As you have given him authority over all flesh. So, so actually, the, the spiritual authority comes over all flesh. That's why you can get healed. That's why you can get delivered. That's why you have authority up on this earth, because the authority is in Christ Jesus who died for you. Listen to this. As you're giving them thought over all flesh, he will give eternal life to all whom you have given him. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent, I have glorified you. Listen, this is what Jesus said. I've glorified you on this earth. I finished the work that you've given me to do. He's wrapping things up. And now, oh, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory which I have with, and that I, which I had with you before the world existed. I have revealed, listen, this is what Jesus is saying. He, he's going, now he, actually, he's giving a report to the Father. I have revealed your name. Remember what the Bible says about you? you he's changed your name? Just like I changed my wife's name and we've coupled as one. Then Christ has changed our name to the name of Jesus and coupled us in the body of Christ and made us one with him. Listen. I have revealed your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. They have kept, listen to this. What wraps them up? They have kept your word. Now they know that all things you've given me are from you. For I've given them your words which you gave me. They have received them and certainly know that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. And I don't pray for the I, I, I don't pray for the world, for those whom you've given me, for they are yours. All that are mine, listen to this, are yours. You see the coordination? I I let me, let me share with y'all what I'm, because I'm finna wrap this up too. I want you to see that your hope, which faith builds upon, is in Christ 
finished work. Who, when Jesus, we just got through reading, when Jesus got finished, he had added the fact that we all wrapped up in the whole triune God. Ain't nobody left out. It is Christ in you that makes the glory of God upon this earth come forth. And there's great power in your speaking. And so praying actually should be declaring God's will with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost behind what you're saying. Not I'm on the outside looking in and saying, please give me a piece of bread. But it is I'm on the inside with you declaring what's supposed to be mine. It is our attitude that we should have in prayer and declaring and our attitude in this life. If Jesus said that we have authority over all flesh, then we got authority over all flesh. If Jesus said that we are healed by his stripes, then actually we are healed by his stripes. If Jesus says that he's taken our poverty and reversed it and given us uh, a prosperity. If he's traded with us sickness and disease and took it and gave us health, then what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are behind is me being prosperous and being in good health. So that's what the Bible says. I would upon all things about thou mayest prosper and be in good health. God is on our good side. And thank God for being on our good side. And thank God for being on your side. And being a blessing to you. And for those of you that came on and listened today, I just want to share with you that there is great hope in Christ. I'm excited about your life. I'm excited about what God is doing in you. There's people coming out of what used to be, and they're coming into what God got for them, and you're one of the ones that's doing it. You don't have to be what you used to be. You don't have to be what you were today. You don't have to be there where you were today. You can be here where God has declared for you to be. You can be that brand new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You can be the one filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit of God. Sometimes you may not know what you're saying, but that's okay. Because when you can declare from the inside what God has said, it makes no difference whether you know it or not. You don't have to be the boss. You can let him be the boss. And when you make Jesus Lord, and Savior of your life, you're telling him, I want you to take charge anyway. But now we have to learn how to release and let God take charge. That's why when you begin to speak in tongue, it trains you for that whole new world that you're living in called, called the kingdom of God. So it trains you. It connects you to your spirit. And so you're speaking out of your spirit, man, by the Holy Ghost, and your mind ain't even involved. That's why when it's time for you to say what God wants you to say, you can hook to that spirit and say something before you even know that you said that. You'll you be like, a, like the little guy that said, did I say that? <laughs> or did I do that? Little Steve Urkel. Did I say that? Or did I do that? Now, and you'll be wondering, did I say that? Yeah, but the Holy Ghost rose up in you. And you, 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 you declare certain things. We think to see a great manifestation of those types of things happen. We're going to see a manifestation of people living like that. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in angelic beings. I believe in supernatural. Just, just, just well, I believe that the devil is real. Because, you know, a lot of people say, I don't believe in the devil, but they believe in all this superstitious stuff. I ran to a lady the other day, and she was panicking because she couldn't find uh, black-eyed peas on the, on, the, uh, on the aisle in the grocery store. Uh, that was the first, first of the year. And, and, and so a lot of people are so superstitious and believe in luck. That, that, uh, and, and I ain't never seen so many folks, uh, you know, but Facebook just came out 
I ain't never seen so many folk be so superstitious even with the word of God. They said, uh, uh, you, if you really want to get blessed, you got to be able to share this. You know, I mean, yeah, that's good to share that. And good, and some, some people are getting certain points because they, they, they get so many shares and stuff like that. But, but I ain't never seen so many people so superstitious because some people be scared not to share it. You don't live in fear of God. You don't live in fear because you're living for God. That's what I'm saying. You don't live in fear because fear opens the door to the devil. What you want to do, you want to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If you got a blueprint of where you're supposed to be, you won't be scared of that other stuff. If you got a blueprint of who you really are in Christ, you can forget all that other stuff, all that superstitious stuff. You know, it's, it's demonic work behind a lot of that stuff too. But God has put the devil up under his feet. And if you declare who you are in him, then you won't have to be worried about all that superstitious stuff. God bless all of y'all. I got to go home. But uh, bless you. Uh, this has been a good Bible. Y'all enjoyed this Bible study? Yeah, I'm glad that all of y'all came out to the Bible study. If y'all have any questions uh, for those of y'all that came on, and uh, I see my cousin over there. Hey, Linnell up there. No, I, uh, all the way up there in uh, Chicago and Donis and and uh, Cedric and all of y'all that's on the Patricia, my, my old classmate, Ray, my son. Okay, DJ. I know, well, my, my grandson, I know he's in the bed, so. But anyway, uh, God bless all of y'all that came on and uh, my brother over there and Attorney Hall over there. Uh, man, I need to holler at you at some point. But God bless all of y'all uh, that have come on and uh, Go back and, and uh, for those of y'all just coming on, go back and, and look at this teaching. This is a mighty powerful teaching, a powerful teaching that we're going into. And we're going to go into some more things as well. But I'm going to be showing you how Christ has, has uh, done this so that we can have access to the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless all of y'all that, that, that just that, that joined us. God bless you. We'll see you. Uh, Wednesday at 12, Wednesday at 12, we'll see all of y'all. We're going to be praying. So, so Wednesday at 12, we're going to have prayer. Y'all come join us then. God bless you.